If you're on a budget, finding a good mountain bike that will get you on the trails can be a daunting task. I mean, hell, mountain bikes can be expensive, upwards of $15,000 for some brands of mountain bike. But you don't have to spend that kind of money to get out on the trail and have a good time. I'm going to show you five different bikes that are out today that will get you on the trails, they'll be nice and capable, and won't cost you more than $1,000. The great thing about mountain bikes these days is that a lot of advancements in high-end bikes are trickling down to the entry level, which means that you'll get a capable bike for a lower cost. I picked five bikes that I would view as trail ready for the beginning to average rider. So there are some commonalities that you'll see on this list. First of all, all the bikes on the list will be hardtails. The hardtails are great. I'm a big fan of the hardtail. They're low cost, they're low maintenance, and they are a great platform to learn mountain biking on. They'll teach you good line choice. They'll be more efficient pedaling. They'll just be overall fun. And as you advance, hardtails will take a boring trail and make it more interesting. I'll have links to all the bikes in the description. And I'll timestamp each of the bikes so that if you want to jump to a specific bike, you can do that. Kona is really one of the storied brands of mountain biking. It's been around since 1988 and actually started its history as a maker of hardtail mountain bikes. Now all that experience has found its way into the 2022 Kona Fire Mountain. The Fire Mountain frame is designed around a 100mm travel fork and features a tapered head tube, threaded bottom bracket, 135mm quick release dropouts, two bottle cage mounts, internal cable routing, and rack mounts. This bike is designed for 27.5 inch wheels with the exception of the size extra small which comes in with 26 inch wheels. Now that's unheard of today in this industry because everything seems to have gravitated to 27.5 and 29. So to have a 26 inch wheels is great for that smaller rider. It gives them a little bit more ability to play around on the bike and properly size it. So as far as I'm concerned, 26 ain't dead. 26 ain't dead. The drivetrain consists of a Samox crankset with 28 tooth chainring. It's connected to a microshift advent 9 speed derailleur and with an 11 to 46 tooth freewheel. The fork on this bike is a 100 millimeter Suntour XCR32. It's a coil fork featuring a lockout, preload adjustment, as well as, and to, this, to me this is really important, is Rebound adjustment. Rebound adjustment at this level of bike is not very common, so to have that ability to control how fast the fork rebounds from a compression is super important to dial in a bike to your liking. The geometry is somewhat unique on this bike. The head tube angle is on the steep side at 68 degrees, but we also get a steep 75 degree seat tube. To offset that combo, Kona stretches on the reach. On the size medium, for example, the reach is 440 millimeters. By comparison, the Trek Marlin, which is a more traditional XC geometry, has a head tube angle of 69.5 degrees, a slack seat tube angle of 71.5 degrees, and reach of 419 millimeters. Chainstay on the fire mount is nice and short at 435 millimeters. The small actually gets a shorter chainstay at 425 millimeters. Again, really thoughtful for the shorter rider. So the pros and cons, the one by drivetrain here is really welcome. What's not welcome, however, is the freewheel instead of using a cassette. The freewheel is not as common and you're not gonna find as many uh, aftermarket options in a freewheel. It would have been nice to have specced a cassette. Now, if you wanna install a cassette, you're gonna have to change out the hub or the rear wheel entirely. The 27 millimeter internal width wheels are really good because they offer you the ability to run a little bit fatter tires. It's a really robust looking frame it just has that classic Kona look, which I think it will appeal to a lot of people. Plus the frame is backed by a lifetime warranty. Marin is another storied brand that has a history dating back to the earlier days of mountain biking. The Marin Bobcat Trail is a great example of classic design featuring modern geometry. The 6061 aluminum frame features an oversized head tube, threaded bottom bracket, dual bottle cage mounts, internal cable routing, 135 millimeter quick release dropouts, and rear rack mounts. The wheel size is size specific, with extra small and small getting 27.5 inch wheels, with large and extra large getting 29 inch wheels, and the medium gets your choice of either 27.5 or 29 inch. The fork is the SR Suntour XCM, which is 120 millimeters travel. It has 30 millimeter stanchions, it features a preload adjustment as well as a hydraulic lockout. 
The frame features its fast back seat stay design, which Marin says it provides vertical compliance without sacrificing power transfer. What this means is the frame has a little bit of give to help dissipate some of that chatter that you encounter on the trail. The bike has a one-by drivetrain and it's centered around the highly regarded 9-speed Microshift Advent derailleur and shifter which is connected to a Sunrace 11 to 46 tooth cassette. The cranks are an unbranded square taper design with a 32 tooth chainring. The cockpit is Marin branded. Brakes again are the Tektro M275s. The wheels are Marin branded and they're double wall for durability. The tires are WTB Trail Boss tires, which are well-known, good all-around tires. I said earlier that the bike has a classic look, but the geometry is far from that. This bike has a 67.5 degree head tube angle with a 74.5 degree seat tube angle. Now both of those are progressive by today's standards. In addition to that, they have longer reach numbers and shorter chainstays which is gonna give you some stability while also allowing the bike to be more playful. I really like the one by drivetrain setup here. You get an Advent micro shift, clutch the railer, you have a Sunrace 11 to 46 tooth cassette, which is ample range to get you through most trails. The 120 mil travel is really welcome here, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of a robust fork on this bike. Uh, the 120 mil XCM with 30 millimeter stanchions just seems a bit flimsy for a bike this progressive. It would have been nice to see them put the 32 millimeter XCR instead, which I think would have provided a lot more value. Another storied brand on this list, we're out going three for three now, is Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain has been around for 40 years. They have two bikes on this list, and the reason I have two bikes from Rocky Mountain on this list is because they're both essentially the same bike but with different wheel sizes, and everyone has a preference for wheel size, so I wanted to include them both. The Rocky Mountain Fusion, which is a 29er, and then the Rocky Mountain Soul, which is a 27.5 inch bike. The Fusion and the Soul are Rocky Mountain's entry level bikes, and their geometry pushes deep into trail bike territory. The two bikes are spec nearly identical, with slight differences in geometry and travel to optimize it for each wheel size, which I think is really thoughtful. And Rocky Mountain is really known for this. They do such a great job. They have a lot of race bred engineering involved in this, so they tend to have some great performance. The frame is 6061 alloy with a tapered head tube, 135 millimeter rear dropouts, threaded bottom bracket, and internal cable routing. And it's dropper post compatible. The Fusion features a 100mm Suntour XCM coil fork, and the Soul gets 120mm of travel to compensate for the smaller wheel size. Now this version of the XCM is a very basic version of it, it only features preload adjustment. The drivetrain here is Microshift Advent with an 11 to 46 tooth cassette. The crank set is Rocky Mountain branded and it has a 30 tooth chainring. Cockpit is also Rocky Mountain branded. The wheel set are Rocky Mounted branded rims laced to Shimano hubs. The wheels are tubeless compatible, but you'll need uh, tubeless tape and valves to convert over to tubeless. The Fusion is specced with WTB Ranger tires, while the Soul is specced with Kenda Amrax. Both are good tires, however, they are not tubeless compatible. The brakes are the reliable Shimano MT4100 hydraulic disc brakes. The geometry on these two bikes is, is decidedly modern. The Fusion has a 66 and a half degree head tube angle, while the Soul has a 66 degree head tube angle. The seat tube angle is steep at 74 and a half degrees. The reach numbers are relatively long in this category, with the Fusion having a little bit longer reach than the Soul. The chainstays are about the same size across the board, with the Fusion having 445 millimeter chainstays, while the Soul has 430 millimeter chainstays. The two Rockies have nice modern aggressive geometry that I think would suit a rider aspiring to more aggressive trails. But the bike is limited by the bottom end XCM fork. The fork would be on the top of my list for upgrades on this bike. My only issue with the geometry is the consistent chainstay length across all the sizes. If you're a shorter rider, you might want to consider the sole, while if you're a taller rider, the Fusion might suit you better. Polygon has been a big player in Asia and Australia over the years and has just recently made a big splash in the US market. They're known for providing really good quality high spec bikes for a very low cost. The Polygon Extrata 6 is no exception to that. If you want to see a long term review of the Extrata 6, I'll provide a link to that in the description. The Extrata frame is a 6061 aluminum frame featuring a tapered head tube, a threaded bottom bracket internal cable routing as well as a 141 millimeter boost rear. Now this is important because the boost rear allows you to run 11 and 12 speed drivetrains also providing stiffness in the rear with your wheels and your frame. 
Sizing wise, the bike comes with 27 and a half inch wheels in size small, and in large and extra large, you get a 29 inch wheels. The size medium gives you your choice of 27.5 or 29 inch wheels. Up front, we have the Suntour XCR32 coil fork with 120 millimeters of travel. This is a nice, reasonably robust fork with 32 millimeter stanchions and has three adjustment settings. Your preload adjustment, your lockout, as well as rebound dampening. And where the Extrata stands out from the pack is the 11 speed Shimano Dior drivetrain. You get full Shimano Dior treatment here from the crank set all the way back to the cassette. So you have a very smooth running drivetrain. The Dior has a wide 11 to 51 tooth cassette mated to a Dior crank set with a 32 tooth chain ring. Wheels and tires are entity branded and the wheels are actually tubeless compatible. You just need to put some tubeless tape and tubeless valve. The tires, however, are not tubeless compatible. So if you wanted to convert to tubeless here again, you were going to need to buy yourself a new set of tires. It's hard to really argue about the spec on this bike. The drivetrain is something you see on more expensive bikes. You get a, a fork that actually has a decent amount of adjustment in this price range. And it just really works well. The geometry is, is modern down country, provides a little bit of playfulness, and you still get a lifetime warranty on the frame. One thing I would have liked to have seen on this bike is wider internal width rims. The, the stock rims come with 24 millimeter internal width, which kind of limits you to about 2.3 or 2.4 inch tires which is fine in most situations and in any cross country type situation, that's fine. But if you wanted to run something a little fatter, you're gonna have a little more balloony looking tire. It may not necessarily perform the way you'd like. So early in the video, I mentioned there are two honorable mentions that I wanted to talk about. And the reason they're honorable mentions is that they're just slightly over the thousand dollar mark. So I didn't wanna muddy up the, this list or go with a weird number of you know twelve hundred and fifty dollars or something like that i wanted to kind of have a clear delineation here a thousand and under but these are just slightly above and i think they're worth mentioning because i think they're worth looking at uh, for a first bike the first of those bikes is the marin san quentin one now, Marin is, a, again, we mentioned earlier, a storied brand, been around a long time, based out of Northern California in the birthplace of mountain biking. And the San Quentin is their hardcore hardtail. Now, if you don't know what a hardcore hardtail is, a hardcore hardtail is essentially, or I like to call them free ride hardtails or enduro hardtails, is that they're like the hardtail version of an enduro bike. And they're basically designed to ride steep, gnarly trails, to ride bike park, to jump, to do aggressive riding. They're built a little bit burlier. San Quentin One is, is right there in that category, but it's, it's offered at a price point that is below a lot of the hardcore hardtails you find out there. Head tube angle is slack at 65 degrees. Seat tube angle is steep at 75 degrees. You have a short chain stay at about 430 millimeters, which is gonna make this bike a playful bike. It's gonna be great for jumping, great for, for running down steep tech. So the San Quentin run runs just under $1,100, which, uh, which is a pretty good price point. In the front, you have a Suntour XCM, which is 120 millimeters of travel, but it's also boost spacing with a through axle. And this is great because if down the road, and it's very likely if you're interested in a hardcore hardtail, there's a good chance you're gonna to wanna to upgrade that fork down the road anyway, and you'll have at least a wheel set that is ready to go. This bike is ready to go out of the box and can be upgraded to accept pretty much whatever crazy upgrades you wanna put on it to, for whatever crazy riding you're gonna do. And if you don't believe me, check out the video by Matt Jones, who's a pro rider, and see what he does with the San Quentin one. I'll have a link to that video in the description. The next bike on the list goes in the opposite direction, and it's the Salsa Rangefinder. And by opposite, I mean this is going to be for somebody who wants to spend a lot of time in the saddle on long, epic adventures, whether it's bike packing or just really long all-day rides in backcountry. It's designed to carry a lot of gear at four bottle cage mounts, four, which means that you can mount four bottles if you're really thirsty or you can mount various accessories onto the bike uh, include, you know, for storage, for whatever. And it's gonna get you out on the trails for a long time for people who just wanna just get out there and get away from the world. The bike's available in a 29 inch wheel setup or a 27.5 plus. If you're not familiar with it, it is a, is a slightly fatter version of 27.5. It almost brings the, brings the wheel, overall wheel diameter close to a 29er, but it offers a little more cushion than a 29er. 
and a, and a little more rollover than a typical 27.5. It's kind of an in-between. And it's great for hardtails, especially for long rides, because it what it does is it absorbs all the trail chatter a lot better and reduces fatigue, so it means you can spend more time out on the trails without burning yourself out. And at $1,049, so it's $50 over the $1,000 limit I just set in this video. But that gives you a bike that's just gonna be a really good adventure bike. It looks really cool on top of it. Salsa is a very cool brand. And it's gonna have a, a reasonable 120 millimeters of travel. It's a Suntour XCM32, which is gonna be a little bit more robust stanchions than your typical Suntour XCM, which is usually 30 millimeter stanchions. And the great thing about the rangefinder is that Salsa gives you the option at this $1,049 price point of either a Shimano Dior 10-speed group set or an Advent X 10-speed group set. So if you have a preference for one or the other, you have that here, which is great because you're spending a lot of time pedaling and maybe you want a group set that suits your preferences. I'll have links to all bikes in the description. If there are other bikes you didn't see on this list, let me know about them in the comments. I'd love to hear about them. Yeah, ask any questions if you have any and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification icon if you want to be alerted to new videos when they come out. And the next video is going to be hardcore hardtails under $2,000. This is one of my favorite categories in mountain biking. In fact, it might be my absolute favorite category in mountain biking. So I can't wait for that one. I hope you guys come back and watch that. And I hope you enjoyed this leg of my journey. Thanks for watching.